Good morning, Riverside. Great to have you in service with us today. And we look forward to having a great time together. If you notice, I'm not on the platform. We decided as a staff that uh, we're setting a better example if we do this stuff from our homes individually and then assemble it together. And so we're wanting to comply, obviously, with all the directives. We want you to know that we're all in this together. And so hopefully this comes out okay and uh, we'll be able to kind of worship the Lord together from our, from our homes. One thing that I want to mention quick before we begin is that uh, we are interactive today. We're uploading all of this in such a way that in that side panel to your right, we can see when you're coming into the room and we can interact back and forth with each other. If you have a prayer request or just want to say hi, the staff is online right now and we'd be happy to to share with you as this uh, video uh, service progresses. So feel free to have something to say or something we can pray with you about, all right? Secondly, a reminder, the storehouse is closed this week. Uh, we hope to reopen a week from Tuesday on April 7th, the Sunday before Easter. We'll see how that goes, how if we're allowed to do that or not. Uh, but if you need food, please get a hold of me. We will get food to you. We're not going to let you go without. We have food downstairs. Uh, it's just the balance and act between trying to protect our workers, most of whom are in that vulnerable category, uh, and being able to give food out to people who need it tremendously is a balance that we're trying to, trying to find. And we do want to protect our workers, and we do want to get food to people. So I just say if there's something you need, please let us know and we'll help you in every way that we can. The third thing I want to say is this. Um, you may want to give a greeting to the Riverside family. Uh, people would love to see your face, your faces. And so what we're asking, it's not funniest home videos or anything like that. It might be $10,000 or $100,000 you could win. I don't know. But just to give a word of greeting, uh, a testimony perhaps, uh, a hello to your Riverside family. And so we're asking for as many people as would like to, to make a little video, a short video, uh, maybe 30 seconds or so, just to say hi, praying for you, thinking about you, everybody, everyone miss you, looking forward to seeing you again. And uh, we're going to give you an example of what those look like. The instructions are on the Facebook page today as to how to make the video, how to get it uploaded, get it to Derek. And we'll show a few of these every Sunday morning uh, as we continue these online services. But Derek's coming to lead us in worship at this time. Right before he does, we've got a uh, example for you to watch, a little video that one of our families has made. And we trust that we'll receive many more of these in the week ahead of us. Hello, Hello Riverside. Hi, hi. Hey, everybody. We're just uh, wanting to tell you that we love you. We miss you. We're doing good. Um, we're still praying for you guys. Um, we don't know when we're going to get to see you and give you hugs, but just know that you are in our hearts. And, uh, you know, if you want to, let me know. We can Zoom, uh, get a little FaceTime going, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. uh, Laura, did you have something you want to say? Uh-huh. I wanted to say that even... Oh, oh, I, wanted to, I wanted to say that even though that uh, mom and dad and I have gone through some tough times here and um you probably have to i just want to know that even though if you have done some of tough times you will be okay and um hopefully um you um, um will get to you know, like properly when the virus passes you can go you okay, might okay. Get okay. Right thank you thank you, thank you for that thank you thank you for that monologue <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning, Riverside. Thank you, Pastor, for that introduction and the Polks for that family update. Yeah, we hope to hear from more of you guys with these family updates. Just try to keep everybody connected, see how everybody's doing, you know. It's good to have some updates. So, as Pastor said, we're going to get into some worship. Obviously, the song choice is situational somewhat. 
uh, just remembering his faithfulness, just remembering that his love never fails. Uh, we may see that other things are failing all around us, but his love never fails. His love is faithful. He is faithful. God, we thank you for your love that never fails. God, I thank you that you are the victor and that we can have victory. That nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Ah, oh, we thank you so much for that love. That love that we could never earn. God, I thank you so much that you are a loving God. All powerful and all loving. All powerful and all loving.
God, we keep running into your love. For where can we go? Where can we go, God? But into your arms. God, I thank you. You say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. God, we need you, God. We feel that need more acute than usually, or more acutely than usual. I thank you, God, that you are a listener to people in need. God, that you are a hearer to those in prayer. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes, bless the Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your rich in love and your slow to anger. Your name is great. Your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons For my heart to find To bless the Lord Oh my soul Oh my soul Worship is holy My strength is failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul will sing Your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore
God, we bless your holy name. Whatever comes, Lord, that we may be faithful, Lord, just as you are faithful. In the good times and in the bad, Lord, we run to you. So, Father, we want to be confident, confident in who you are, confident in your ability to pull us through, God. Confident in the fact that you love us. Lord, we put our trust in that. We put our trust in the fact that you love us. God, and you're never going to let us go. And there's nothing that can separate us from you, Lord. So what can we do, Lord, but just live in your love, walk in your love, or walk in your acceptance, God? Walk knowing that the blood was shed for us, for our sin, Lord. We can walk in knowing that you have set us free. God, we want to be able to have the confidence to say it is well, no matter what storm. God, in the good, bad, whatever it is, Lord, just like marriage, the good, the bad, the rich, the poor, God, whatever it might be, Lord, that we know that your, well, your riches are awesome, so we don't have to worry about that, Lord, but whatever happens to us down here, Lord, we know that you love us, God, and we can say it is well with our soul, Lord. We want to be able to trust you so much that we could just confidently say it is well with my soul. So would you sing those with me? It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. sound of his voice sees it are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken from my regard through it all through it all my eyes are on you through it all through it all it is well mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea and through it all through it all my eyes are on you and through it all through it all it is well and through it all are on you and it is well it is well so let go my soul and trust in him the waves and wind still know his name so let go my soul and trust in Still know his name.
God, in the midst of not knowing, in the midst of these confusing times, Lord, we know that you are stable. We know that you are a rock. God, you are the cornerstone. God, if we build a foundation on you, on solid rock, sometimes these kind of situations, these kind of circumstances bring that out. Lord, I pray that we would build and build and build on that rock. God, would you be our cornerstone, Lord, as we build on who you are and what you've done, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor Tom, take it away. Well, we're going to be reading this morning from Luke chapter, chapter 7, beginning in verse 36. And we're continuing in our series that we've begun called, If You Want to Be My Disciple. And this is the fifth in that series, and it's kind of our focus for the year ahead. We're looking, Pastor Stone and I are kind of looking to see how we can make his folks aware, our family over there at Power of God aware of what we're putting online, and as well that we will be aware here what he's putting online and We'll be able to enjoy all of this together as one family. But I'm continuing in a series I've entitled, uh, If You Want to Be My Disciple. And this is part five. And I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter seven, from the NIV, beginning in verse 36. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner." Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, here's our statement for today. Do you see this woman? Remember our theme verse, at least part of the verse is our theme, is Luke 14, 26, where Jesus turns to the crowd, not just to the disciples, but he turns to the crowd and he says, if you want to be my disciple. Remember that the disciples of Jesus' day the disciples uh, who had teachers in, in the Greek world and the Roman world, that their goal, their life's pursuit was to become like their teacher in every way. They adopted their mannerisms. They adopted their inflections of speech, that where the accent fell. Uh, they walked the same way they walked. They wanted to be the living embodiment of their teacher in every way that they could. We talk, remember, about muscle memory. And uh, I won't go through the big clinical definition, but for us, muscle memory, memory is uh, being and doing something so consistently that it becomes a natural part of who we are. We're not interested in superficial. We're not interested in appearance. No matter how deep in here somebody goes, the circumstances drive, we want the same thing to come out, and that is the character and the nature of Jesus Christ, which can only be done with the help of the Holy Spirit. Remember, we've talked about being a disciple is different than being a follower. And again, it may be it's semantics, but being a disciple is more than being a follower. It's being a follower on PEDs, 
what we're calling performance enhancing disciplines. It's extreme following because our heart is to become as much like Jesus as we possibly can. We read initially from Ephesians 5, 18 through 20 in the first four messages in this series. And we talked about be being filled, continuous filling, but with the Holy Spirit and the importance of that in our lives. Not just something that happened in 1957 or 1975 or in 2010, but a continual refilling of the Spirit of God within us. In the second message, we talked about the joy of the together. That's the singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your heart. And we said there's no room there for negativity. It is a celebratory unity that we share in Christ. And it's one of the identifying characteristics of a genuine disciple of the Lord Jesus. In the third message, we continued in Ephesians and we talked about giving thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That PED following slash discipleship is a life of continual thanksgiving, a life of continual gratitude and appreciation to God for all he is and all he's done. And last week we talked in the fourth message about submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And this is probably the most difficult of all of them. And Paul takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, vocabulary to go through this and explain it and give examples of what it looks like. Submitting to anyone to anything is never a natural thing. It's never easy. But disciples put the needs of others before themselves. Disciples are not self-centered, not self-focused, but are continually serving, continually giving, uh, continually serving as Jesus served. So today, if you want to be my disciple, part five, and we're entitling it, Do You See This Woman? In 2019, uh, my message is focused on the words of Jesus in Luke's gospel. We've said many, many times that Luke's gospel is the gospel of the underserved. It's the gospel of the broken. It's the gospel of the destitute, the gospel of the outcast, the gospel of those whom no one else wants to even think about, let alone engage with. But yet we see Jesus engaging with these outcasts, with these broken people, with lepers, with prostitutes, with, with all of the people that nobody else wanted to touch. And it's why Luke's gospel is my favorite. We did a message last year from this passage that we entitled, And They Were Many, or They Are Many, talking about the many sins of this certain immoral woman who would come before Jesus. And we talked about how this uh, woman had three strikes against her. First of all, she's coming into this other man's home, which was common at that time if there was a, a teacher or someone nearby. Even if they were eating, people would be allowed from the village or the town to gather around and maybe not so much to watch Jesus eat, but at least to hear his words and the conversations that were going on. And this woman that came... Uh, everybody knew who she was. The Bible calls her a certain immoral woman. Just the fact that she was a woman in that culture and coming directly to Jesus, that stuff didn't happen very often. It was looked down upon. And then it says that she was an immoral woman. And we can read into that however much we want to. But she was not just a woman coming to Jesus in a very patriarchal culture, but she was an immoral woman. And then it says that she was a certain immoral woman. Now, I don't know what the difference is between an immoral person and a certain immoral person, but it must have been something, but it's three strikes against her. And as she comes and she kneels at Jesus' feet and begins to weep and begins to drop tears of of love or of appreciation or of, uh, or of conviction upon his feet and dry his feet with her hair and then pour expensive perfume on them, uh, Jesus turns to 
Simon because he knows what he's thinking. He knows that Simon is thinking if Jesus, and it says this in the scripture, uh, Jesus can't be much of a prophet because otherwise he'd know what kind of a certain immoral woman this is. And he would have nothing to do with her. And Jesus gives a, uh, an illustration who's going to love the most and the person that is forgiven the most loves the most. We, we understand that. But then Jesus says to Simon, do you see this woman? I can only begin to imagine what Simon is thinking, like, uh, duh, of course I see her. I was the first one that saw her. I understand the, our rules of hospitality, that people can come in and listen to a, to a teacher who's here and listen to conversations, even though they're not eating at the table with us. But I was hoping that she would have knew better than to come. I was hoping that she would have known better than to show her face, that she would have been ashamed, that she would have been embarrassed, that she would have understood that there was no place for her here. But yet here she is. Yes, I see this woman. I saw her coming down the street. I saw her when she turned into my driveway. I saw her when she entered the house or this area where they were eating. She said, I've seen her longer and more than anyone else, and I don't like it. Yes, I see this woman. I absolutely see this woman. I see her just fine. I see her and my stomach is turning. I see her and she shouldn't be in my presence. I see her and uh, she's ruining my party. My guess is that everyone there saw her and that she was getting the stink eye from everyone that was nearby. That she was feeling such a heaping weight of everybody's condemnation and judgment and disapproval upon her, including from the disciples, because nobody liked Christians for the stink eye. You know, if you, if you want to see what that looks like, be on a platform in the middle of a sermon when somebody gets up to go to the bathroom, and all the eyes that follow them in the door and out the door and back in. Um, even the disciples, I'm sure, were caught up in this. And everyone that saw her, that saw this woman, saw her the same way, except for one. There was one person there who saw her very differently. They all saw her. They all noticed her. But they all saw her in a different way than Jesus did. He saw her differently. He saw her differently differently. And in his seeing her differently, it brought her to salvation. Disciples see as Jesus sees, with a whole different kind of vision. Everybody in that place was looking at this woman, staring her down with the stink eye. But they didn't really see her. But Jesus did. Um, think about this in our lives. What about the person who makes your skin crawl? How do you see them? What about the person that so frustrates you because they disagree with you on everything, they see everything different, that it makes you want to scratch your own eyes out of your own head? What about the person who is opposed to everything that you're for and for everything you're against? How do we see them? How do we see the person who looks different from us, who comes from a different place from us, who lives in a different world than us? We notice them, we see them, but do we really see them as Jesus sees them? This is a challenging thing, but we're talking about some really advanced discipleship. Aren't you glad that Jesus saw you differently than everyone else around you? That he saw something in you that no one else saw? That he saw something in you that was worth saving? That he saw something in you and in me that was worth giving his life for? 
and taken our sin upon himself. He didn't go to the cross and said, okay, I'll take his sin and his sin and his sin. But this person, Matuzo's sin, it's a little more than I want to bear. He needs to be taught a lesson. Jesus took upon himself all of our sin. I'm so glad that he saw me differently than everyone else saw me. Um, everything in me today wants to cry out to him because I want to be a disciple. I don't know that I'm there yet, to tell you the honest truth, I, but I'm, I'm striving with everything in me to see what he sees. We all see, we all notice, but uh, I'm not interested in seeing as the crowd sees, uh, to see what's, uh, what, what's popular or what's not popular. But I really, in my heart, I hunger to see better as he sees. How about you today? Uh, we can mock and make fun of and make jokes of the people that disagree with us. Of course, then we don't handle it very well when they mock and make fun and make jokes of us. Uh, or we can see as Jesus sees. Um, are we taking discipleship steps so that we see those around us, that we see situations around us as well as people around us. Um, I tell you too many times, I'm, I'm Simon. And I say, Lord, of course I see, and, and I'm offended for your righteousness by what I see. I am righteously indignant over what I see. And then I have to kind of realize that God's righteousness did just fine before I came along, and my guess is it'll do just fine after I'm gone. He doesn't need me to defend his righteousness. Uh, he does a pretty good job of that all on his own. But I want to see as he sees more than ever before. Before we close this morning, I just want to ask, uh, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Have you committed your way to him? Have you called on him to save you from your sin and to be Lord of your life? I'll tell you that there's no better friend than him. And his word reminds us that when we call upon him, he hears our prayer. And whether you don't know him, whether you knew him once and you've kind of walked away, or whether you know him intensely now, as you call upon him this morning, he hears you. His word is true. He'll forgive our sin. He'll, by his Holy Spirit, come into our lives. He's perfectly willing to take the steering wheel and be our help and our comfort and our encouragement today. So as we close in prayer, will you call upon him again this morning and ask him to be Lord of your life and commit your way to him? The stuff that you're dealing with may seem impossible to you. It may seem like a mountain that you'll never get over, but it's not a mountain to him. And he will lift you over it or wheel you around it or get you through it somehow as we put our faith and our trust in him. Uh, for those of us here in this service today that are desiring to, to see better as Jesus sees, as we pray, let's call upon him and let's ask the Spirit of God to be our help again. So, Lord, we come before you today and we thank you for our gathering. It's a digital gathering, but we thank you today for your presence with us across the many homes that are represented. Families, singles, couples across this congregation, thank you for your presence today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word and your word that reminds us that too often times you see different than us and we want to see as you see. So as we call upon you today, whether it's to forgive our sin or whether it's to be Lord of our lives or whether it's to help us with, in this situation or that situation, whether it's a, a need for encouragement or a need for wisdom and direction or a need just for peace a need for fellowship with you. We thank you for hearing our prayer. 
and help us to see more like you see. Help us to see with your eyes because it is our heart to be disciples. It's our heart today to be disciples. And so we thank you for the help of your Holy Spirit with us and we commit our way to you now. And I pray over this Riverside family from one end to the other, from front to back and side to side. And thank you for your hand of protection. Thank you for your strength and your encouragement from day to day. And we thank you for the purposes that you have created us for. They will be fulfilled and we'll give you all honor and praise in your name. Amen. Amen. Bless you, everybody. We sure do love you. Make sure to stop in and see some of the devotionals that we're putting up through the week. And we're praying for you. We miss you. Can't wait to see you again. Have a great, great day of victory in the Lord. Love you.